nice and comfortable. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Mic check, one, two, one, one two. two. We beat out a few tunes here too, man. Things <laughs> right there. 66, take one air, Mark. Chris Bosch. Yeah. Welcome to Australia. Appreciate it, man. It's hey. beautiful here. Before we get started, one of the things we're, we're getting better at here is uh, acknowledging country. We'd like to pay our respects to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people here in Eora Nation and pay my respects to the elders past and present. And we're so happy to have you in, here in Sydney, Australia. Oh yeah, man. I want to give my respects too. We can see this incredible oval here. It's called the Sydney Cricket Ground. And it's my home team, the Sydney Swans Football Club. Uh, we play a lot of games here throughout the season. And um, I think back to my draft, my name was read out to, to represent a, an AFL team here in Australia. I remember having that feeling in the stomach going, I hope, fingers crossed, I hope they call my name out. I hope they call my name yeah. out. And then when the name eventually gets read out, it's just, uh, I guess, relief. Mm -hmm. how, how did you feel on draft night? That's the perfect way to say it. I was relieved. I, I was kind of playing it cool the whole time. Yep. You know, it's the whole process getting drafted and, and it's not real until you're there and it is real. And that's when I really start getting nervous. And you suited up. Yeah, yeah, I was suited. I had my suits on. Oh, everybody's there. <laughs> yeah, my family was there. You know, everybody's watching. I mean, I had watched the draft every year as yep. a kid growing up. So as this was happening, you know, I kind of start getting very nervous and oh. couldn't breathe. You know, I was 19, man. Absolutely. You know, I was a young kid and... It's funny, like, when I got drafted as a 17-year-old out of high school, <laughs> and 17. I remember I had four AFL professional teams come and knock on the door, and one of the teams was these blokes. And back in the early 90s, these, this team was on the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. And when they came knocking on my door, I was trying to close <laughs> the door. <laughs> but I always wanted to play for a team in Melbourne called Carlton. The Blues. Of course, the best team, right? The best team. They were their best team <laughs> at that stage. And they actually, they flagged it. They said, hey, we like you. We don't usually do this, but we're going to think, we're going to take you in the third round at pick 41. And I went, wow, how good is this? The draft is on television. I watched it. So I'm sitting at home watching, waiting for my name to be called out. Pick 41, pick 41. Come on. Got to pick 40. And the Sydney Swans read my name out. And I went, oh, <laughs> shit. Did, like, that, did you practice and stuff right away? Did yeah, you play so right away I at 17? Here, I was here at 17. I was here about three weeks later, and we were running laps. They put me in the house with two other guys. I was the youngest in the house. They said, you guys meet, shake hands. You're now living together, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at training. And I cried. I ring my mum. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. She hung up on me. <laughs> you need to stay. This is a So what made you stay just out of curiosity? Oh. Family, my family. I thought if I could play professionally here for the Swans, um, I can change our, I'll change our life. You know, like you move away from home, you get sick. And it must have happened with you at, at Georgia Tech. Yeah, it did. I, I remember uh, one day in particular, it was like pretty much my breaking point. Uh, I remember practice and I was the most tired I have ever been in my life. And I was sore and I couldn't walk, I couldn't move. And so I'm in math tutoring and I remember like, I remember trying to do my homework and everybody started laughing. I'm like, damn, what are they laughing at? And the teacher had to wake me up. Oh, wow. And I woke <laughs> up, she's like, yo, go home. You know, just go and get some rest. And so I didn't even fight. I, I, I went and I got up and I just sore and I sat in by myself and I called, I called my parents and, and they were like, yo, they must have heard it in my voice. They were like, are you okay? And I was just, <laughs> I was crying, but I didn't tell them. I was like, I'm just, I'm just tired. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're, you're trying to hold it in. Yeah, I'm trying to hold it in. Like, I'm, I'm good, man, you know, uh, everything's cool, man. I'm just tired, you know? <laughs> I mean, but you know, I bounced back. Uh, I mean, that's the thing, it's about that resilience, right? Yeah, it's just not, don't quit. Don't it's quit. just not quitting. I just, I wanted to quit that day. It yeah. was just, home was too far and I didn't have any money, so I couldn't buy a ticket. There it is. <laughs> Drafted fourth overall in the NBA draft in 2003 to the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Obviously the dream come true. It was so cool. I mean, I was kind of just a fan at the same time because when I got there, I'm just like, yo, that it really is Vince Carter. Yeah. It's kind of overwhelming because you meet Vince Carter at practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're in the locker room. I'm meeting him now. He's my teammate. And then, you know, then the coach comes in and rock, rock. You know, you kind of have to snap out of it fairly quickly and you, the practices were just, they must have been full on for a teenager. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember as a 17 year old here trying to run and, and, and compete with the men. One of the things yep. that I noticed first was like, you had to do double time. So 
most of the yep. vets were out of shape. So they would, you know, go do a couple sprints. I would do some, and then they'd do one, and like, Rook, get at the front of the line. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. And then I had to go twice before they went once. Yeah. I think you, you, if you go through um, learning the game, we think we know a lot about it as a young person. Mm -hmm. And I've actually got, certainly here at AFL, where you've got to pay your, pay your respects and do your dues, as you do in, in, in the NBA. Was it tough? Did it, you get times where you just felt you wanted to pack it in and go home, or you were like, no, I'm committed, and this is, where I'm this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life here? You know, looking back, I knew I had to be patient, but I knew I couldn't quit as hard as it got, and I'm sure you can understand, yeah. especially when you're just getting the crap beat out of you. Oh, yeah. You're a teenager, and just grown men <laughs> are just manhandling you every day, you know? <laughs> That, that, that wasn't very fun, but, you know, I wanted, it was everything that I asked for. I mean, I remember as a 17-year-old here trying to run and, and, and compete with the men. Um, I, I got to Sydney here at 70 kilo. I ended up finishing up at about 95 kilo playing weight. So I chucked a little bit of muscle on, and you are in the same boat. Yeah. There was nothing of you. I was 200 pounds when I got drafted. There you go. <laughs> and, you finished, and, you, and you finished at? 240. Wow. I mean, 245, somewhere in there. Yeah, you got to put it on. You got to put it on. And so it's that work ethic that I think I reckon endeared yourself to the, the fans in Toronto. One of the funniest things, Sam Mitchell, who ended up being my coach, yep. he was still, um, he was an assistant coach when I was uh, a rookie. And he said, I knew you were going to be special because I had like a brace on this knee a brace on my elbow, a mouth guard, and he was like, you were the smallest thing out there, and we were just beating the crap out of you, and you wouldn't quit. You kept coming you back know, for more. You know, he kept coming back, and, and then you just kept playing no matter how much. And, and he told me, we deliberately made a plan to just beat you up, and you wouldn't quit. And, and I always thought, like, wow, I, that's I pretty never cool. looked at it. Yeah, that's pretty cool, because to me, I was just playing the game. And, you know, uh, taking lumps, obviously, you know, you're at another level, taking lumps is a part of it, and you know you're a rookie, and you just gotta do what you gotta do to survive. That, and you earn those stripes, don't you? Yeah, oh yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. you earn them big time. Because as a young person, young player, all you wanna do is play that first game. Do you remember your oh, first game? Yeah, like, um, it was just a dream come true. Got 30,000 people. I started on the bench, and I came on, and my first kick, I ended up kicking a goal. I hit a big shot, too. <laughs> <laughs> we won the game, too. Yes. We won by, like, six points. I hit one to take us up by four. Oh, you know, like oh, a minute incredible. and a half left, yeah. Um, I finished with three goals, and I thought, how easy is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then do... after that, it wasn't easy. Oh, man. <laughs> I think that's the worst thing sometimes, because oh, you'll man. come in and be like, oh, <laughs> This oh, is easy. Man. Yeah, we were 1-0. Oh. Like, oh, we're going to go 82-0. <laughs> and oh. We're going to make the playoffs. Oh, we're going to championship. I'll be rookie of the year. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, man. And I think the next game, I got absolutely beat up. I had a split <laughs> lip and just, I got like one kick or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there's special days, right? Like, I, I, all I remember and... about that game was how much, you know, everybody was moving way faster. Because in the preseason, yep. you know, I'm playing most of the minutes. You know, you're a young guy. You play the whole game. Yep. And naturally, the numbers are going to be there. And, and, and I was playing well. I had a really good preseason. And then all I remember is that when I got out there in the regular season game, everybody was moving so fast. Because on TV, it looked slow. Yep. TV looks slow. It does not. It's, it was so fast. I remember just thinking, like, <laughs> wow, this is crazy. It's just another level to the game. Ugh. It's Once about the that time. Came. They're all going to keep coming. Yeah. Just, quiet, <laughs> just quietly. <laughs> we used to have team meetings out here, and the coach would pull us in, we'd talk, and a plane, and he'd stop, wait for that plane to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you, and you, and you. It's like, man. Have you ever met Michael Jordan? Yeah, I met Mike once. Oh, what was that like? I mean, he actually knew my name, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You played it cool, or Yeah, you... I played it cool, man. I was cool. You know, Barack was there. I couldn't. So the president was there? Yeah, the president was there. Oh, wow. I couldn't, you know, I had to be cool, man. So, so, you, so just... you pushed Barack out of the way? Well, I mean, he was over there anyway. <laughs> Everybody was over there, and I was looking at Mike just. Wow. I know, I'm going to go talk to Mike. And, and so I just went up to him and talked to him. And he, oh, wow. He just wow. spoke matter of fact, like, you know, Chris? I said, you know my name. <laughs> 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 you know, all right, I'm, I, we can just stop right now. Wow. But if, you know what? If you take me right now, you know, I, it's all right. 
And it all started here in Australia, I guess, with Mike. Yeah, I mean, Luke Longley, too, because... And Luke. You know, they had that run, and... Absolutely. You know, I remember uh, Luke Longley being on that team. Luke Longley, everybody would be, Luke, <laughs> and he's from Australia. We were like, from Australia? Uh, where is that? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But, I mean, I I'm sure, you know, that gave everybody a reason here to be oh, a Bulls fan. Absolutely. And, I mean, you know, if you're a Bulls fan, life was good in the 90s. That's how it all got started, certainly for me, watching basketball and became addicted to, to the game and, um, and it followed ever since. Even though uh, I'm a football player, but uh, we always <laughs> kept an eye on basketball. So our Australian well, Boomers we... team, our Olympic team, we think it's very, very strong at the moment. I knew those guys were good when we played them back in 2008. They, I mean, we would win the game, but boy, it was a tough, tough game. Yeah. And I mean, I think, um, you know, having, having a guys like Patty Mills, mm a strong national team plus guys that are actually in the NBA, you know, that, that definitely inspires the youth and, and they'll be more getting better and coming. I've got to tell you, I'm a Spurs man. Yeah. Uh, and Paddy Mills is my, is my man. Um, and he's made a huge impact over, over in uh, San Antonio. And yeah, they're always there. Always there. I know how hard it is to play against those guys. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, when's the first time you ran into LeBron? That was uh, in uh, ABC camp in uh, Tenek, New Jersey, back in 2001. That's the best high school players. Yeah, it's the in, best high school players in the, in the country at the time. And the funny thing was, we kept playing. I think we played each other like two times after that. So every big tournament, I was my team was always playing his team. Yeah. So like, and then right away, I, I recognized how smart he was in basketball because I knew how smart I was. Yep. He was calling out my plays before <laughs> I did them. <laughs> but it was still like, you know, who's this guy calling out? He watched the up fake. <laughs> like, man, what you know about how you know I do an up fake, man? Oh, man. You know, we were just kind of on the same track at the same time. And it's like, wow, I'm trying to, I know where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously you're going because you're the best player in the country. Um, but yeah, we kept, once, once we ran into each other back in, at the All-American camp, it was, yeah. it just kept happening. You know, we ended up forming the big three. Yeah. The move to Miami it wasn't taken lightly, obviously. It was a journey. I, you know, it, it kind of went in stages. I was like, man, everybody's gonna think this is so cool. Cause like, I know how I felt as a kid mm. and I, I know what this would be like. It's, everybody should be happy. No. <laughs> everybody does not like that because everybody's not a Miami Heat fan. Had to, had, to, had to, you know, had to come to grips with reality. I was like the dude from Canada, like, hey guys, isn't this cool? Shut up. <laughs> here I am. Yeah, who are you? Shut up, softy. I'm like, damn, bro, I just got here. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, and you really did turn uh, Miami upside down. The feel of an NBA championship in 2012. I mean, that justified everything. The move from Toronto to you know to, to Miami to and teaming up with LeBron and, and, yeah. and the guys, um, amazing, amazing. You know, it just it, it's kind of. Uh, I'm just glad it, it happened the way it did. I mean, um, it kind of just shows how if you really want something, you have to really go for it and really believe in it. That first one for you must have been so special. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was that. That's like the fun one. <laughs> <laughs> that's like everything. That's the monkey off your back. Yep. You know, I'm sure it was like that for you too, right? Oh, look, I mean, uh, our football club here, the Sydney Swans Footy Clubs, it's, they're over 140 odd years of history, and yeah. you know, since they joined the league back in the day, and in our in our history here, we hadn't won a premiership or a championship uh, for about 70 odd years. Where, so, did you guys win here? No, nah, we, we played the, the grand final uh, in Melbourne. At, okay. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground. We're out, we were lucky enough to win uh, by a, you know, a very small margin, but we, 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 we got rid of the curse almost. Yeah. And I mean, we talk about you need a lot of things going your way to be able to win a championship. Yeah, 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 man. You know, we had, uh, we had come up short the year before, so we understood the importance of, of you know, how hard it is and how much it takes to actually win. Yep. And we were humbled by that. And so you feel that you're destined to do something and then come back to the same exact, you know, situation and be just motivated and just know that, you know, this is our moment. I mean, it was incredible. But I didn't, I, I never, I never liked to <clears throat> stay in one place. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I, I felt that there was so much more work to be done. So I never ever, um, I never ever like to like stay in that moment of just continuing to 
look at the same trophies. I'm like, yo, that's last year. This is this year. Let's get another one. Beating the Spurs in that second championship was just uh, an amazing feat again. So you got mm -hmm. two championships now. The second one must have been sweet. The second one was, was a relief. Yeah. The second one was just so stressful. I had never not had so much fun playing basketball. I mean, it was, it was more of a feeling like I was still waking up days later yeah. thinking that we had a game. I would almost wake up yep. and get in the shower and then make it all the way downstairs before I realized, like, oh, yeah, we won. <laughs> Thank God we won. <laughs> I could see Tony Parker just, I can still see it now, oh. man, just Tony Parker oh, man. coming at me full speed, you know? We talk about injuries, and I've had a, my fair share of injuries, and the things that you went, certainly in the uh, later part of your career, mm -hmm. with the blood clot on the line. That was, that was the hardest thing I had ever been through. I, I thought that um, winning the championship was hard. Coming back from that was even harder. I was in the hospital for five days, and right when I thought I was getting better, they said, yeah, we've got to operate on you, oh, and wow. we've got to clean you out. And I was in the hospital for another, I want to say, week and a half. And, you know, it was just a very, 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 very tough experience. You know, I had to, you know, I was near death. And in the back of your mind, though, you, because you, you're the competitor that you are, I'm coming back from this. I'm, I'm yeah, hundred percent bigger, bigger and stronger. And I did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I did. We watch television. We see the show. Yeah. And little, we, we don't know about the work required to get the body in the right shape, the mind in the right shape, mm -hmm. so you can execute come game day. Coming back from injuries. I mean, as you said, you've, you've shared with us a, a little bit about the, the journey and how the body's holding up. Yeah, I remember sitting on the bus some days just. I can't, I don't know how long I can do this, man. I, you know, I would just play and I just start having pains. Yeah. Man, why is my ankle hurting? It really hurts. <laughs> I didn't twist it. Oh, man, I've been I didn't there. step on anything. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, I, I don't know, man. Uh, this is crazy. I did that in Canberra and it felt like it was about to snow. And I'm running around and I probably had two kicks for the whole game. Yeah. I'm playing on a really good player. And, I, and I'm like, I don't really want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what were you so... I mean, I, I can only imagine, because you guys yeah. can really hit each other. Oh, yeah. Was it like any moment if you got made a tackle or were there a timeout or you were trying to run oh. and in the game, you can see the game just leaving you? Yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> the, 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 the toughest one is when these young, I guess, the, the rookies and the, the second and third year players come in and they want to test themselves against the veterans. So yeah. it's they come stand next to you and they start bumping and pushing and put. I'm like, oh, come on, guys, really? <laughs> on, the ball's up the other end. Let's just, you know, let's just be nice about it. But then I think back when I was a young pup trying to do exactly the same oh, thing, yeah, trying absolutely. to challenge the veterans. And I know myself, I thought I had another one or two years to go that I could <laughs> certainly play still. Yeah. But when I got out to do the laps and the practice and, the, and I went, oh, I couldn't do it. What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> 32 years of age, I probably think I've got one more in me. But the body's telling me that it's done, mate. Again, to be able to, you got to make that call. We all retire at some yeah, point. Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I never got to that point. You know, I still felt that I, I was kind of battling those things. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was 33 when yep. I played my last game. I was, I wanted to finish out my contract, uh, and I, I think that was going to take me to 35 and sign one more deal. Yeah. You know, I was kind of to that <laughs> point, but I was trying to hold on to being an all-star playing it at a top level and I wanted to, you know, prove that I could, you know, have a championship team uh, post big three. You know, it, it didn't happen. Then you, you found out you had a, another blood yeah, clot. Yeah, I had another blood clot. On your, yeah. on your leg? Yeah, it was in my leg. I kind of freaked out a little bit because my calf was sore and yep. I, you know, in doing the research, you look out for the symptoms and all this stuff and one day my calf was sore so I said, no, I got to go to the hospital and check it out. Yeah, wow. And they told me like, oh yeah, it's a blood clot, which, you know, probably, yeah, sure, if you get kicked in the calf, yeah, you're going to have a blood clot, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that was, you know, that was during All-Star Weekend yeah, actually and, and you, in you, Toronto. And you had to miss the, the All-Star Weekend. Yeah, it was tough for me because uh, I was in a three-point competition, yeah. so I was feeling like, man, this is another era, in, in, in I'm, I'm changing who I am. I've come back to yeah. Toronto as an all-star, and I'm a three-point shooter now, you know? <laughs> and, you know, that was a part of my career that I never really got to do, which is fine, you know, looking back on it. But, you know, sometimes my mind kind of wanted to go to what if I hadn't have yep. 
said anything, I'd still be playing. But then again, that might be the one that gets you. You Absolutely. know, it's the one you don't see coming, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I knew you'd accomplish a lot in your career, but I was blown away by the amount uh, of, I guess, um, the accolades that you've been able to accomplish over the course of your career. I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm just going to go through some stats here. <laughs> Two-time NBA champion, 2012 and 13. 11-time NBA All-Star. That's incredible. But the one thing uh, that I really, really sort of fell over, it's what you were able to accomplish early in Toronto mm -hmm. and your stats. Um, and I'll just, I'll, again, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I just think it's, an, uh, it's I'm a massive fan. Those are like the stats years. And I, I, and I know you asked me this off camera to talk about this stuff. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> the third youngest player in NBA history to record 1,000 rebounds. I mean, that's the stuff it's, that's... It's uh, crazy saying that. I didn't know that I was third youngest to 1,000 rebounds. That's third, cool. Third youngest player sweet. in NBA history. <clears throat> yeah, that's so pretty cool. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a, 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 massive, a massive accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, you know what? You, you, just, you just keep your head down, and I know you know how it is. You just keep your head down and work, and... You just try to make things happen, and, and it's just kind of, you know, game by game, just focusing on different things, and and then you look back and then kind of see the body of work that you've done, and 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 it must and make thankfully you so it's proud. good. Yeah, it's good, man. I mean, you know, it's kind of, I'm to a point now where it's, I'm I'm beginning to appreciate kind of looking back on everything. It's been an incredible ride, incredible journey, but I've really enjoyed this. This has been incredible. Oh, this yeah. is a, one of my highlights of, uh, as I said, I'm a Bosch fan, a basketball fan. Um, I've got a football, one of the guys, okay. going, this is what we play with and, yeah. and uh, this is a gift to you. Oh, so nice. This I is, appreciate uh, it. Uh, we play this in our Indigenous round. We celebrate Aboriginal culture you in one that? of the rounds and I've signed it. And, and our, one of our great, great players, uh, Adam Goods, uh, who's a two-time Brownlow medalist, which I guess you'd call it the MVP yeah. of the league in basketball, has also signed it. That is cool. And uh, he's the games record holder here. He's played about 370 odd games. But I, I want you to take that back to uh, to, to your family. And, and I appreciate that. And man. One more item, mate. I want to I want to uh, present you with. This is a uh, traditional Aboriginal artwork from the, uh, from the centre of uh, Australia. I family. appreciate that, man. That is cool. I've never seen anything like that. A piece of Australia for you um, from the traditional that. owners. Um, that is cool. I'm going to frame this. Oh, man. I'm going to frame this and put it up. I've been, now, thank you. No, I've been looking for you. artwork, too. Oh. That's funny that, you know, I have a lot of white walls in my house. <laughs> So this will be awesome. <laughs> well, there's a piece of uh, Aboriginal uh, uh, artwork in, that you can hopefully will sit proudly in, in your household. That is tell. And I guess, mate, um, I really hope you've enjoyed your time here in Sydney, Australia. I know you're doing a lot of travelling, but uh, certainly for me, as a basketball fan, this has been a, a huge highlight. Uh, one of the days that, I guess, being an, an ex uh, sports person, you get to meet people like yourself. I said, I'm a Chris Bosch fan from way back. Um, you're an absolute superstar, um, and I've just had a, an amazing day today. So thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man.